think we're good. Cool. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Kevin Pirabi, aka User Super Hamster. Um, involved in a lot of stuff, helping organize this conference, Wiki Buzz Monuments in the US, um, software development, um, and I'm one of the co founders of this Wiki Fortress initiative. <laughs> And my username is Jenny Lee, and I am also one of the co-founders of this. And I encourage you guys to get, if you haven't, our very high-quality Wiki Fortress um, sticker. And and if you're very special, only because you came to our session, our um, Wikipede stickers, which are based on, a, I don't know if you guys know or recognize this, but in 2003 when they had the logo contest, and now it kind of results in the globe. This was one of the other competitors, and it did not win. So, but but <laughs> <laughs> come, come to us. It's an amazing. It's an amazing image. Yes. Oh, and I'm Andrew Lee. I'm also one of the co-conspirators on um, Video. And then Frank Schillenberg's our other co-founder. Um, spiritual. Yes. So we put his photo there. Spirit, because he's not here. But... Who also heads WikiEd, by the way. That's like yeah. that's what the kids and heads the. Wiki Commons photographers user group. Yeah, big, big shout out. Uh, yeah, so the problem we're trying to tackle is, as many of you know, Wikipedia biographies often have poor or missing <laughs> biographical photos. Um, and as an example, there's a fun bad Wiki photos Instagram account that kind of documents <laughs> some of <laughs> the more questionable biographical photos out there. No offense to the photographers, it's tough. Um, but I think Pete Davidson actually once commented on how much he disliked his <laughs> photo on there. Um, and the challenge stems from the fact that we, of course, acquire freely licensed photos on our articles whenever possible. Um, and, you know, that's fine for like squirrels and trees and planes, which pretty much everyone can more or less get access to. Uh, but when it comes to notable people, it's hard to get good access to photograph them, right? You often need to go to the events that they're attending. You often need press credentials so they can get up and close with them. Um, and while the foundation has sometimes helped um, photographers get credentialed, that's not a very normal thing they do. It's kind of the exception and not the norm. I mean, this is the challenge that we wanted to tackle. Oh, yeah, sure. And, <laughs> you know, we've had certain efforts to get more portraits in Wikipedia. Um, some of you may know David Shankbo, and operating out of New York, was famous for doing this in terms of going to uh, fashion shows or okay. doing VIP events. Uh, Gage Skidmore, you might have seen on Flickr, has done a lot of this recently with uh, Comic Con. Politicians. Politicians. Yeah. Politicians. yeah, actually going to political uh, events, things like that. Uh, we can meet Deutschland has been very active in this area. Um, we're only now kind of uncovering the depths of how other communities. Um, around our movement are doing these types of things and we're starting to document them more and the new thing that we created after we created wiki fortune said you know we're doing this at least in the u.s side or initiating in the u.s side but we need to catalog these better so if you go to meta if you go to wiki covers events that's been kind of a nice side project where we said we're doing wiki pod portraits or is anyone else doing something similar and we're starting to see folks from asia africa europe starting to catalog all their different type of event photography projects which is pretty cool so the question is, how do we expand and make event coverage more systematic on a global scale? And that's where we enter Wiki Portraits. It's the initiative we founded earlier this year um, to help photographers get press access to events. Um, and it's a, the fun part is we're not only engaging with existing experienced commons photographers, but we're also engaging with other non-Wikimedia photographers and kind of them bringing them in to this effort. Um, so, so far this year, we've recruited over a dozen new photographers, um, kind of a mix of both professional and high amateur to contribute. Um, next slide. And the events we've covered so far this year include um, starting with Sundance Film Festival and then throughout the year, South by Southwest, Telluride Film Festival, um, Cannes Film Festival in France, the Toronto International Film Festival. We did the International Journalism Festival. We did the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and then also the Edinburgh International Book Festival, and then also Tribeca in New York. And each of these events kind of kind of has their own format. So Can, TIFF, and the New York Film Festival, they're kind of red carpets where you kind of line up as uh, photographers, the celebrities come through, you take their photos. Um, some events like Sundance have more formal photo calls, which is not as much of a, like a public event, but rather kind of a confined event where they invite the photographers to take photos of the people. 
Uh, we've done performances. So Edinburgh Fringe Festival, that is a festival in Scotland that lasts pretty much the whole month um, where you've got like clowning and comedians and different types of performances. Um, so those are just kind of fun to photograph from like an interactive standpoint. Uh, we've done a lot of panels, South by Southwest, CAN, et cetera. Um, this is where you go as like an audience member and there's panelists speaking. And as they're speaking, you take their photos. Um, CAN also has press conferences where we've done photos, um, as well as kind of stakeouts where as the people go into the panel to speak, you kind of stand outside almost like paparazzi <laughs> taking their photos as they walk like paparazzi, by. Paparazzi, yeah. 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 And then finally, our photo studios, which we'll cover more, um, but that's basically where we actually do public outreach, where we set up a nice photo studio with lighting, the public comes through, we take their photos, we do outreach and teach them about um, Wikimedia Commons. That's actually why we printed these posters you see here next to the um, slides. Oh, I can do this. So, <laughs> so far, this has been entirely fund, almost entirely funded by Rapid Grants. Um, we love Rapid Grants and some private donors, which are basically friends of Jenny, who will indulge in her like save the, the her latest Save the World um, uh, project. So the way that we've done it so far is that the funds almost go entirely to lodging, um, just because the one of the, the hard parts about um, these events, you know, whether or not you're a can or a South by or Sundance, is that housing is just super expensive. So um, for the major events, the photographers generally pay their own way there because they, this is, this is their, this is not their real job. It's like kind of their, their hobby. So, um, clearly there's some equity issues with this over the long term, And we, we are, we realize that, um, and we are now in the middle of applying for a larger program grant for 2025, um, which basically allows for some smoothness of uh, planning and also because the rapid grants actually do not cover the cost of something like Cannes or uh, TIFF or Toronto Film Festival or South by Southwest, like even close. Yeah, so we're just going to kind of go over our work so far this year. So at Sundance, we had red carpet access. This was actually Frank Schillenberg's work. Um, so these are the nice photos we got from that. And this is actually before we actually had the Wiki Portraits name. We were just kind of like yeah, running this, this as an experience. So Sundance yeah. 2024, like bless them. Um, they pay for their own way to work, <laughs> which is very, which is very wiki actually. Like you spend your leisure time and your money to, to help grow Wikipedia. So there's Frank actually running our little portrait studio um, at yeah. Sundance. Yeah, there's, Sundance yeah, we coincided with the party, so people came to the party. They saw our photo booth. They got some nice portraits. We put them all on Commons. Um, we went to Cannes Film Festival, which is one of the biggest kind of place for premieres on a global scale. Uh, we got like Meryl Streep, George Lucas. He's very proud. He has both Meryl and, and George. Yes. Uh, on their on their pages now. And I think that's, is that Liam Hemsworth? No, it's um, Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. The Hemsworth yeah. always confused me. I think that's like when during the, the people walking by to get to the um, rooms. Um, And then we went to the Inter -journal, International Journalism Festival in Perugia. And get stickers while you're at it. <laughs> um, in Perugia, Italy. This one was also self-funded. Because at a certain point, we we had a lot of people from the global south. It had two Nobel Prize winners, um, and a lot of no, uh, notable individuals in panels, three at a time. Usually, like you know, maybe like three at a time, multiple sessions at a time. So you could go in and out. It was really, it was very efficient from a time perspective and in terms of shooting people. Um, uh, we did South by Southwest. I uh, was a big part of that. These, most of these are, many of these are yours? I guess, yeah, so so this is shooting slightly differently. These are panels for uh, interviews on stage at South by Southwest. So these are a little bit, uh, I don't want to say easier to take, but different type of photo to take. What's curious, and we'll talk about later, is learning how to photograph these events. Events like this, they have a photography policy saying that when events start, you have 10 minutes to take photos, and then no pictures are allowed. So that means that when you are a participant in the portrait project, you need to kind of learn what the ground rules are for these different events, which is yeah. always very different. So that was interesting about South by yeah. Southwest. And we, at South by, actually, we did a wiki portrait studio. Actually, uh -huh. this this year we claimed the same house to do a bunch of wiki events. So if anyone has any ideas of um, things to do at South by Southwest, which is in March of 2025, we can, we've kind of claimed, we've kind of claimed the space. We hopefully will do a Texas meetup for an entire 
um, states. So out of that, there were 450 portraits uploaded and they were used on 70 pages. And this was like inviting a lot of the speakers and inviting um, the film crews and cast to come. It's convenient because they kind of come to you and South by was nice and let us put little notes in the um, well, green rooms. Um, so as the speakers would go to the green rooms, they'd see our little tents and go, oh, that sounds cool. And they'd come visit our house for portraits. So Edinburgh Festival Fringe is it's it's something like 30,000 unique performances over 3,000 shows in like 400 venues in like basically four weeks. And so and a lot of the shows are from around the world. So you can get performances from Nigeria and like a, a you know, stand-up comic from Ukraine and then dancers from Hong Kong. So that that's really nice because they're visually interesting and they're on their way up. Because oftentimes you get a combination of people who are have, have Wikipedia pages, but no photos or are just on the verge of deserving a photo. The fact that they're there probably like you, you kind of check to see if there's enough independent media coverage to cover them. Um, and then we just did this, which was so much work. So, so this was like, we actually had to get another photographer in the sixth photographer because we were just dying. It was like 20, 20 um, red carpets a day, Toronto International Film Festival. And like, it, it, it turned out to be actually the most um, cost efficient way just because there were so many people that you could take, but we were just like burned out. It was like eight days of like 20 red carpets a day. Um, but the nice thing is it's basically a lot of films from around the world. So you're not just hitting like, you know, the big ones that are going to be in the Oscar competitions, but really like, oh, this Indonesian film, let's go. Like, you guys are definitely going to 10.45 p.m. red carpet for, for us. Yeah, I thought I'd talk very quickly about this. And it's it's easy to look at these big events and, you know, con and Sundance, all these things. But I'd encourage you also, you know, we're looking for small things. You can take individual events at a book signing there, the bookstore next week. Um, these are just some great examples of at the National Book Festival in D.C., Jim Hayes there and I take photos there all the time. And it's amazing just to see these, these authors I've never heard of, but they have like hundreds of people standing in line and we don't have a picture of these people in Wikipedia. So Kendi Ryan, for example, was like at the longest line at this book festival. I'd never heard of her, but she had young black women just lining up to meet her. And it was just great to, I, I actually get more thrill out of photographing these not right. so well known yeah, right. people of color to put in Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. People rather, know people know what Kate Blanchett is. Right. Rather than the hundredth like. <laughs> picture of, you know, a celebrity, right? So um yeah, I, I love these yeah. these unfound gems that we can put in. I would say as we explained to the credentialing offices, like Wikipedia really cares about the long tail. Like we are there, yeah. you know, on like the last day of um, the Toronto Film Festival taking the last red carpet of the Indonesian film. Yeah, and I thought I'd just introduce this to you. How many people have seen this tool? Well, have you used WikiShootMe before? Has anyone used WikiShootMe? Cool. So you might know it, it brings up a map. You can bring it up now and say, oh, here are all the pictures I need in this neighborhood. How many of you heard of this tool called Picture This? Thank you. No. One. I, do not know. I don't know why this tool is not used more. I don't even know how to find what documentation it? on it. It basically, you bring up picture this, and then you type in the name of someone there, and then it brings up all the wiki data I missed about that person. If there's no picture, you get that little button right there. You click on that button, you take a picture of a mobile phone, upload it to the comments, links to the wiki data. One click, photo, wow. upload, connect to wiki data. It does like five edits for you with one click. Which oh, is wow. amazing. So that's how I did this. So I was at an event, with this guy, Katie Sargent, who's a professional soccer player, I said, do you have one on Wikipedia? He goes, no. So I brought up this tool. I said, oh, you're right. We don't have a picture. Click on that icon, snap the photo. With your phone. Upload to, with my phone. Comments, Wikidata, all done in one shot. So I think I encourage you folks to try that because I use it all the time, but we don't have great documentation about that. So no, why will people just on your own? Um, <laughs> so summary, so I just ran this. Um, before actually in the morning so see where we are okay so we have th about three thousand photos uploaded covering about a thousand subjects give or take with still more to upload kevin has not uploaded his tiff photos at all yet um so there have been 660 photos on over 100 language wikis across 2500 ish pages we have nobel laureates Pulitzer prize winners oscar winners emmy winners um and then this one's a little bit tricky. So we estimate that our photos will currently receive an extrapolate of 30 million, at least 30 million views per month. And honestly, celebrity photos and movie-related photos are really doing heavy lifting there. 
and um you know and what's really you know since we're we're creative commons licensed like our photos don't just like show up on like random news like celebrity news sites or like other kinds of media and then it's fun because like they all have um google alerts on their own names and you're just like oh like look at this thing that's being used in france or singapore so i love this tool I forget what it's called. Glam. Glam Morgan. Glam Morgan. Yes, Glam Morgan. Yes, I don't know who built it, but thank you very much. Magnus, uh, of course. Uh, this is Glam Morgan. Yeah. It's like G-L-A-M-O-R-G-A-N. Yeah, Morgan. yeah. You can, you can, and we actually had to design all our categories so that it, it, that if you just hit Wiki Portraits, we can see across everything. This number is like not quite accurate because one of the things it only counts for views of that page, regardless of whether or not your photo was on it. So our tip photos got added mid month but they kind of count um, as though it was for the full month. Um, lessons learned. I don't know. Um, Who's learned? Whose lessons are these? These are not uh, my lessons. Yeah, I'll, I'll start, but <laughs> Devin, jump in here. I mean, as I mentioned before, you have to understand the format of events. So just doing this pre-work, not only getting the press credentials, but talking to the PR folks and you know, understand that you have 10 minutes and only 10 minutes, for example. Um, what's the lighting situation? Is it harsh lighting? Is it stage lighting? Can you use flash even is a big question. Yeah, no, um, no flashes and performances. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like you will get yelled at if you use a flash and you're not allowed to. Um, participant lists, like get the list of all the people who are going to be there. Check, not easy to do, check all of our content in Wikimedia to see what we have already. Are you going to be improving photos? Are we adding something that never, never there before? Um, Kevin, maybe you can talk more about the equipment, but the equipment you use makes a big difference too. Yeah, and the equipment can vary, right? Like if you're watching a panel, you probably want a very nice long zoom range um, lens. Um, but if you're doing portrait and red carpet, you want you know something that's more like 24 to 105 millimeters that lets you kind of shoot nicely up yeah. close. Um, like Andrew said, some events you have flash, some events you don't. Uh, I've actually, because like I said, I only shot with planes and birds. I've never had a flash before. <laughs> so <laughs> being at TIFF was my first time actually using a flash. You need to buy a flash. You bought, yeah, you bought, we all, we have now many flashes. And yeah. what you see on the laptop there is probably why Kevin justifiably doesn't like dealing with people. When you have all these people coming, you're taking photos of them. You've got to find out who they are, how to contact them. Do they sign over the permissions? Explain to them why we made these yeah. things. Why, what commons is, what is public domain, what is CC by, it's a lot of stuff. Right. So a lot of this extra th stuff, you just had a whole front of house staff working this. We didn't take a single photo, but we need those support people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. SJ was one. SJ was one. Yes. Also, yeah. Rose. Permission. Tell me more about permission. Yes, we will get to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We will get to that. Um, more lessons learned, do you want? I mean, one of them is permission. Yeah, so. why don't you talk yeah. about subject release forms? Yeah. So, um, so a couple things. Um, we have a like a form that's powered by a company called Harbor gives us lovely QR codes and the release form. So when, when they're like in the red carpet or on their panel, we don't, we basically don't need a release form because they're kind of like on exhibit. Um, we usually do the release form mostly to inform them what creative commons is um, in terms of what it means to be um, CC, CC by SA. SA. So basically it's sort of a, an awareness thing. And then people sign. And the, actually, the most important reason we need these kind of forms in the end is people have terrible, terrible handwriting. And <laughs> so when they write their names on our on the whiteboard, you can't necessarily read or we, we retype. So you actually go back to the form for a couple of reasons. One, to check the spelling of the name. Two, to email them at the end. We're like, all the photos are up. Um, three, to get a title. Or so we put them on, you know, are, is this person an actor? Are they a composer? Or are they just, you know, like whatever, a thought leader? Um, and then they, and then, you know, sort of as a whole byproduct of that process, which again is powered by a wonderful company called Harbor, um, we get the subject release forms. And so that is, and tonight, if we have our act together, <laughs> we also will, you will see that QR code in action. Um, and also note for the release forms, I don't think we do it so much as a legal requirement. Like, I don't think we're like breaking the law if we upload yeah. their photo to the comments on our free license. But we just want to make sure people know that, oh, if your photo is freely licensed, anyone can technically use it for like pretty yeah. much any purpose across and then the internet. There is a difference between our photos creative commons license and people can use it. And then there's also, but at least in the United States, people still are protected by personality. Personality, by rights. personality, personality rights. rights. 
this is outdoor for like you don't have a expectation of privacy exactly. right? or you do have an expectation exactly of privacy. and if someone does come through and signs the form and later complains we're like well you signed the form so. yeah. Yeah. we also will get this like weird it was like this weird thing where people were clearly i don't know what the purpose of this was they were making up a name you know and then and then making up the title I mean, but you can kind of catch catch that because the name just is a little bit too punny, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> but that was just weird. It's like, why are you do like, wh why is it worth your time? It's a fun nickname. I'm super. Yeah, interested. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the thing is also, uh, this is why I learned about studio lessons. You never know, right? I was like, <laughs> I was like looking through, our, you know, because most of the photos that we get from South are like, okay, this is Megan Markle, this is Conan O'Brien, this is, and I, I was like, why is this person fifth ranked of all of our photos this month? Like, and then. I was, you know, and, and like, we took this back in March, so this was probably in May, and then I just, like, dug in, I was like, who is this person, <laughs> and so then I went to the ba the page, Good Luck Babe, which is a song by, um, I don't know, not, I know not how to pronounce her name, but she's the hottest singer right now, and on the cover yeah. of Rolling Stone, and then I, like, scrolled down, and you see our side by side someone had added but this is the other i feel like this is one of the best cases for like wiki portraits in terms of like <laughs> <laughs> the two people and and then um the dan Neger is actually super famous and like actually um is is it probably deserves much better photos so if he you see we encounter him we'll get a much better photo so next up um we have a rapid grant for jaipur literature festival which is one of the biggest um cultural events in the world and this is really important to us because most of the things that we've gone to at this point have been in europe or north america and we really wanted a big cultural event in the cultural south in the sorry the global south um we did get a grant for the nobel prizes in stockholm and actually it's also in oslo because it turns out that the peace prize is different same helping day but different city uh <laughs> than the rest of the um awards national book awards and then our wish list this is sort of pending um credentialing and though i do feel like our talk record at this point puts us in a pretty strong point um the san diego comic-con which is a, where a lot of the big kind of summer blockbusters are released the oscars in um, march 2025 and the met gala in may 2025 so who knows like it's kind of this i think with our numbers we we end up with like a pretty strong case um i do not this is not me who <laughs> um so i guess one of the questions is why do photographers do all this like pay for their travel to come to these events and like take photos and release them under a free license and don't get paid um and much like you know i mean we're all wikipedians we kind of understand the motivations <laughs> but for photographers it's an ability to get credentialed where they might otherwise not be able to so we're bringing photographers who like love the art but might not necessarily have any formal experience photographing red carpets so us getting them access to red carpet that's just a very unique and fun experience for them and an opportunity for them to kind of build their portfolio and like once you've done a red carpet you have a portfolio then it becomes easier to get credentialed for future events um a sense of purpose yeah sense of purpose sense of fun kind of you know the same reasons that we're all with comedians and like enjoyed the volunteer effort like same kind of thing here for a lot of photographers i think um and just great networking like it's actually fun at tiff in toronto it's just so much fun to re meet the other photographers like meet the people photographing for getty and shutterstock and like <laughs> networking it's just a lot of fun. And, and tiff is toronto is really funny because they call you in the order of how much they like you so we can tell like how much wiki is like rising or falling when we're like oh we're third we're third after getty and like shutterstock and then it's like wikipedia and sometimes you know we're lower but and the impact is fun too like we take our photos we upload them and then we use the glam morgan tool to kind of see how many views the articles are used on and like when you see your photo being viewed a million times over a month, a month yeah, yeah a that's month, just yeah. very exciting um it's kind of fun too because when we apply for credentials at these events they often oh, yeah, ask you cute. questions <laughs> they ask you questions as if you're like a magazine sort of like or oh like a local like celebrity blog yes yeah, so you're like oh how many subscribers do you have what's your, what's your audience and so like you know the like magazines are like oh a few hundred thousand few million and we're like i don't know like two, two billion, billion. <laughs> 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 wikipedia's audience is two billion i think it's also worth putting in a little plug for wiki data driven content mm -hmm. when we replace the photo in wiki data with one we've taken all the Wikipedia editions that make their info boxes off Wikidata benefit in a second. Yeah. And we see that right away. We see like, oh, Catalan, Basque, French, blah, 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 blah. I'll get that photo right away. Yeah. English Wikipedia. So where are <laughs> I spent way too long going through and manually changing it in every language before I realized that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we are, uh, 
according to the glam tool at 117 wikis but maybe i would i usually say over 100 different language wikipedias because some of those are not some of the wikis that we're on are like wiki wiki court uh wiki, wiki quote wiki quote um and then wiki data and everything yeah we usually yeah. only add our photos on english wikis and it's mostly wikidata and like other editors adding it to the other wikipedias yeah but it's like really wonderful to see like who, which countries care about which celebrities, I think, and like, <laughs> and like seeing like, I don't know, there's so many, like, sometimes we're like, what language is represented by this two letter code, like very ra random. So what was yeah, the most true. recent one? There was one for like, there's a language on Madagascar, uh, which and now Air, uses, uh, yeah, which now uses some of our wiki photos. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, question. Hello. And I know it's not the Nobel Prize, but do do you have you considered sending somebody to the World Science Fiction Convention? We are we have not considered, but we are very help, happy that if anyone wants to go, we will help them. I do not. I, I, my father was a photographer. Sadly, I am not. But, yeah. Uh, it's it, this year. It's in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. Where is it? What month? Uh, uh, August. Oh. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's the kind of thing because we. I mean, we are a limited number of humans, and like what we've kind of developed is the process that where some something can be duplicated. I mean, Comic Con, you get the the visual media celebrities. Yes. World Con, you get the actual writers. Yeah. Sure. No, that is a number our... of, of world famous science fiction writers. We don't have photos for. Right. Yeah. 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 Now there are at least two SF conventions I know where they somebody has set up a booth to get pictures mm -hmm. for these purposes. Mm. But, uh, it sounds so right go, for go to Wiki Portraits page on the talk page <laughs> or go to the Etherpad for the session. Please put them on there. Yeah, that'd um, be great. And what's really nice is like images are really global, right? And and that's what's what's nice is, yeah, I spend a lot of time like, you know, writing my articles from scratch. Like my latest one is actually SLOP, which is for, which is the, I could learn this, the term for AI generative, wait, AI generated high quality, sorry, high volume, low quality images. And <laughs> And then like, it'll take, it'll, I don't even know if other countries are going to um, sort of other languages are going to, you know, basically use my content in any way. But when we put up a photo, like sometimes it'll very rapidly get picked up in like 50, 60 different um, wikis. So, um, and since our, our projects are often in other countries, we're working with other affiliates. So we got our credentials from Canada uh, for Toronto Film Festival for Wikimedia Canada. Uh, you know, you had to kind of go to like uh, Wikimedia Sphere to ask, like, do you have contacts with the Nobel Prizes? Because like we had no idea, but we knew that they they had. We knew from coverage that they had photo like um, press credentials, and then you know, obviously, since Deutschland had been doing this for so long with the Berlin Ber uh, with the Berlin Film Festival, we reached out to them to have them cover Venice because a lot closer to okay. Nobel Prizes as well. And then we're in discussion with Wikimedia New York to figure out, can we do local trainings and like what we would call out of photo which are, <laughs> um, which, which are nice because you can get someone to edit Wikipedia in a way while they were, they're more likely not to be beaten back. And, and so I think that's, that's a good sort of training kind of introduction to like feeling like you've had an impact and it's, it's accessible. And then we were in discussions with AfroCrowd Okay. Thank you, Sherry, for the send to like send photographers to like planned events or something. But basically, if it's in New York, we can send a photographer to it. That's okay. that's well, that's one of our bigger strengths. Yes, physical tools. Um, yeah, as you, we uh, Kevin mentioned before, this is just some of our advertising we did at least for South by Southwest. Right, the how do we get these hundreds of filmmakers, authors, presenters to know about the studio? Um, we got the South by Southwest organized to send out to every speaker by email, but we also had physical stuff, handout cards, and we had a lot of folks show up yeah, in the studio. That's one marketing. And yeah. then all and then, kinds of digital tools. Yeah, just very quickly, if you've never used this tool before, I've finally documented it, but it's <laughs> basically a Google spreadsheet system where you can just paste in a list of names in column one and it'll look up all the stuff we have in the rest of the spreadsheet. So it'll look up whether we have a Wikipedia article about them, an image. Uh, it'll do the ORS score, right? So it'll use AI to figure out whether it's a stub start feature. Um, but then it also will tell you, like, what are the most popular articles? So if you're only have limited time, which photos do we really need that are high value? And you can see, you know, which ones to prioritize. So it's it's nice not just for uh, the portrait work, but also for some edit-a-thons if you're trying to evaluate lists. Yep. Uh, feature steps. Um, 
in addition to, of course, covering more events and working with y'all, um, we want to create a gallery tool to kind of better showcase photographers' work. Because what we're realizing is we have photographers, many of which are not, you know, classic comedians who are uploading their photos and then they want to showcase their photos and submit them as a portfolio. But like, you know, if you go to special upload on commons, it's not a very sexy interface, right? So you want to like a way to more easily showcase works without well, having to use the key also, also very important because when you have to apply for credentials, you often have to send them links mm -hmm. of your yeah. work. So if you're, an, if you're a reporter, you send them articles or like, you know, this is your page at the New York Times or whatever. And then we have what? It's like, it's, it's actually, it's, it's pretty distressing actually. <laughs> and so, um, you know, shout out to Wikimedia Switzerland that has an innovation grant, um, which does actually, unlike the foundation, fund software development at this time. So we have a ask out cross fingers on that. Um, all kinds of wiki data, so much. And then adding wiki, we need better, I, I'm just gonna say, we, we need faster ways to add wiki data items for yeah. people who are not already in wiki data. Yeah, that, that's a good point because we, we've we recruited these new photographers, but they don't know wiki data or the Wikimedia movement well, right? Yeah. So to disambiguate who you're taking the photo of, we usually use IMDB identifiers, right? So we'd like to create a wiki data item for this person with this IMDB, but that means they need to now learn wiki data. And that's not the nicest experience for a newbie, right? Yeah. So we do have tools that cradle but we could use much slow. better so tools. Slow. It's so slow, slow and not that so intuitive slow. necessarily. So that's a problem when someone does not have an entry of wiki data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. so like you are the cinematographer for this independent film out of Mexico and you don't have a wiki and data. The funny thing is the easier case is they don't have a wiki data. The harder case is Jim Parker. <laughs> okay, there's we have seven Jim Parkers in Wikidata. One's a filmmaker, one is an author, one's an author filmmaker, one's a filmmaker author. One, and so you will, <laughs> I'm sure you all know how do you figure out and do author, authority control? And that's yeah, not and easy. Trying to figure out their birthday, birthday, you know, year because yeah. the So we need to teach them to be librarians yeah. at that point. Right? Yeah. It's not easy. And I have Brandon Dickens, Henderson, the Wikipedia. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Chicago uh, uh, economist, uh, economist and Jim Henderson, the, uh, the uh, hockey player, and Jim Henderson, the Canadian politician. No. <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> and, you know, we'd love to conduct more photography workshops to teach portraiture and live events. There's a whole art to um, red carpets, which they will talk about also. Um, I did not write this. So let's see, hold on. Um, these are, oh, okay. So here are some of the things that we would love to do. So right now we, what we've done really as Wiki Portraits is we go to an event, we take photos of famous people, we come back, we upload. And, but there's lots of different things that we could do else, you know, otherwise. Like for example, we could work with the Indiana Public Library and they could throw a party where they invite notable Wikipedian, sorry, notable Indianans to, <laughs> to come and then we would run a studio, right? So it's a it's great for the public library to do a public engagement event. And then, you know, we can do a very concentrated, um, like non-celebrity based event. And then this is, you know, with Wiki, um, with AfroCrowd, for example, they can host um, events where they can just invite us to existing events, for example, so that we had, you know, Sherry and I had dim sum with the Creative Commons CEO and Rebecca McKinnon of the foundation the other day to sort of scheme. We, we would love to do workshops to train more photographers because what's nice is we can get people into the pipeline and build their portfolio, um, even, even if they're not professional photographers. And that's great because I will say, I, I guess we didn't put this on. So of the people that we've attracted, we've kind of recruited for this, more than half are women, and then two thirds are people of color, and two thirds are new to the Wikipedia, like the Wiki, the Wikimedia movement overall. So it's a very good way to get top of funnel new participants that are not necessarily, you know, heads down editing or you know, doing categorization. Um, and we are, you know, we're open to learning, like, or if you guys have such suggestions. And is that the last slide? That might be the last slide. Oh. oh, thank you. Oh, there's a last slide. Okay. Yes. Can you just indigenous local context? Yes. First nations in Canada. You may not have high hits or views because it is the local context. So how does this, um, if you are looking at your metrics, 
we, right. you know, you want people to you would click it more than than the possibility of this um, site, you know, it will be more popular. <laughs> I think I understand what you're saying. It's like if you care mostly about the top line number of how many millions of views do you get, right? I would say we we're good on we're good on the celebrities at this point, and that um, we have to define what the what the different um, new new metrics now. Now we've like shown people like clear demand. We're on over 100 wikis, so there are a couple things. So one is um, number of photos used on how many wikis, and that that's interesting because you're not um, you can only get that there are only so many celebrities in the world, right? So you actually have to go pretty far in order to get um, more, to get that number to be large. Two, the other thing that I kind of like, and I haven't figured out how we would be able to do this systematically, is how many wiki data, how many new wiki data items have we added, right? Because if we have found someone who probably deserves a photo, but they didn't have a wiki data item, we are adding a wiki data item. And then what I've, we've also done is we've added, we've created the article for them. Because sometimes if someone's performing at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival or they're speaking at the International Journalism Festival, there's some hint of notability that comes from just being kind of elevated in that way. And so that's a signal for us to figure out like, are they already in Wikipedia? So if we got very clever and we figure out the tools. It's like how many new pages, like I probably have added like, I don't know, 10 or 15 pages, just be like, oh yeah, you know, this person doesn't have a page, probably deserves a page because we can see them from the news coverage that they have. Um, so there's probably some metric that we can focus on that. And then for us, I I, I do think, um, just speaking of Jenny, I do think in, and having had many pages nominated for deletion, that <laughs> having an image of someone strengthens their case in, like, if they, like, look very important talking on stage, they're less likely to be kind of considered random, right? And so my best <laughs> example for that is um, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. There were two winners of two different years for the, their thing called like, so you're, I think it's called So You Think You're Funny, which is the biggest UK contest for funniness. So I created two pages just, just because we, we were shooting them anyway. So one is a guy named Finlay Christie, who comes from a, like, he didn't go to Eaton, but like, got kicked out of Eaton, kind of like that kind of vibe, like very kind of posh, like UK. And then the other person was Samira Banks, who is a Middle Eastern, uh, Middle Eastern British woman. And I put both of them up and the articles are almost exactly the same length. It was like, they won this award and this is what they're known for. And Samira Banks was nominated for deletion within like a couple of days. I mean, so it was the best kind of almost controlled experiment that I've seen because so, they were basically identical um, credentials. I like created them within days of each other. And like, why is one nominated and one, why is one the other one not nominated, right? And so um, I was like, this is the biggest contest in the world, you know? And, and But I think having photos for, um, you know, both women and underrepresented kind of groups is a way that we can kind of like, kind of help the notability, help, help the notability for a lot yeah, of people. That's true. Um, so. We may have five minutes left. Yeah, yeah. Technically we, less. We got technically less, yeah, yeah, we got it. So maybe we do a speed round of anyone has any questions. We'll just take questions real quick, not have to necessarily answer them all right away. Any or other find questions us. or comments? Yes. So say you happen to bump into someone and you don't have to signing permission. So using an example from last year in Toronto when we were at the bookstore on the on the last day and then you took some photos. Mm -hmm. yeah. How would you engage and say like and explain all this without all the backdrops, all the release form? Right. Yeah. For that event, I think it was there's no expectation of privacy, as you mentioned. So I think that was the easier case. But you're right. In general, you'd want to like try to get explicit okay from the subjects if possible right. and for south by we actually did schedule so like people would sign up for a particular time slot so that would give us time to actually engage with them one-on-one -on -one. we did also allow walk-ins but it was kind of like when we have time we'll take right. you in but right. uh yes sometimes like i live in new york city which is event city so when i first started with the city i started doing that immediately but what i will do i will ask the person I will tell them I take a picture. I said, I'm going to put it on Wiki Commons. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll put it on Wiki Commons on the spot and I will show it to them. And right. I will ask them. I'm starting to do this recently, right? Maybe this 
the scripture was better, mm -hmm. and I get them to help me with what I should put in the description because AI does pick up what's in the description, and I didn't realize how valuable Wiki um, is, right. especially when you really do a good description. And I never have any problem with saying yes, taking pictures. Of yeah, that's a great point. Sometimes I'll bring up their Wikipedia article and say, look how bad your picture is. Can I improve it? And they'll be, yes, please. Another, okay. another question. We upload in JPEG. I think it's JPEG. We shoot in whatever the fancy DSLR is, so it's often yeah, raw, raw and JPEG. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a girl who just does like, Magic wand, make it like <laughs> yeah. right? But like we have people that like like edit yeah. an hour. If we have time, we'll shoot raw, which is a gigantic file, but it gives more options later on if we want to improve it. Yes, question back there. Um, I think there's one that we would love to get more wiki data people right yeah i think yes and yes like if if we have the hands it'd be great to get just wiki data specialists and we've done that a little bit at south by but if we don't have that yeah, we sometimes it's have pretty ugly. We're, we have a backlog. Yeah, of, exactly. Like, <laughs> photos we've added to Wiki Commons and they don't have Wiki data items. And then we have to go back. But we have a, literally a spreadsheet because it's so slow to add the yeah. items via Cradle. So, yeah. Help. I do that all the time. Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I, I snap pictures of, uh, of buildings, interesting buildings. Uh, they, they, A, they look interesting, or B, they are on the National Register of Historic yeah. Places. And we have lists of articles, and we have a list yeah. of all of the national. NRHP, yeah. uh, I think that the, the, the basic yeah. summary is there's no perfect solution and more hands or more solutions are definitely. I don't know. I'm just going to make a new get that item and someone will deal with it later, which I don't encourage, but that is something people do. All right. Thanks. All. You have to go to the next session, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all.